Here is an AT&T 100 EB telephone. The AT100 EB. What the heck is EB? I have the AT&T 100 model like this, which I've had for many years. It's actually a very nostalgic telephone in my collection. I remember finding an AT&T 100 desk phone in my aunt and uncle's house in a closet somewhere. This was back in like the mid 2000s. And I asked her if she was using it anymore and she said I could have it. And so that was one of the very first telephones I had. It was a big deal at the time to get a new telephone. Didn't have a lot of them. So I remember getting that telephone and I used that telephone for a long time. And it's a good telephone. I still have it to this day. It's hooked up in the bedroom as uh, as of the time of this taping. But that's model 100. What's model 100EB? I don't immediately see anything different about it. It's AT&T property, not for resale, like they all said, because back at the time that this was new, you would rent this from the telephone company for a monthly fee. It wasn't yours to own. This actually seems a little bit heavier than the AT&T 100. I would, I would be inclined to say it's got a mechanical ringer, but it's got low and high, so it's got to be, uh, I suppose it doesn't have to be, but I'm fairly certain it's going to be a an electronic ringer. I always like the buttons. They have really good ergonomics to them. They're like, um, they're not flat. They're kind of cupped a little bit and it, it just holds your finger really nice as you press it. It's a really good telephone. Really well designed. Typical handset. AT&T. It's got the same cord and everything that the standard 100 does, so I really don't know what the difference is. Nothing extra on the back. I just have no idea. It's in a really nice condition. It's not even that dirty. A couple marks there, probably clean off, and this would be a really nice example. Well, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see if we can figure out if there's anything different between this one, the 100 EB, and the regular 100. Gosh. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and call it now, and let's see what the ringer sounds like. The ringer sounds kind of spoiled. That's one of my favorite ringers. I remember hearing that everywhere back in the day. Oh, it's not spoiled, it's just loose. Cool, that should be an easy fix. Sounds like it's going to work. Alright, so the ring works properly. And it's the same It's the same ringer as the AT&T 100. Let's call, um, we'll call the Farmer Jones cold line. See if strawberry season has wrapped up yet. It dials a little differently. It only makes the tone for like a second, not even like a fraction of a second. And we are picking blueberries generally each day now. It doesn't sound like a typical AT&T phone of this era. I don't know how to describe it. But all AT&T telephones from this era 
usually have a very distinct sound to the audio and this does not have that. It sounds really good though, very clear. A reservation to guarantee your spot in the field. And uh, we also have a uh, free ride to and from the field. So it is different in that sense. I don't think it's made by the same OEM that the other ones are, the AT&T 100. Well, I'm going to call the testing answer machine and we can test the outgoing audio now with a couple of testing messages. Two old messages. Message one. This message is being recorded from the AT&T 100 EB or the EB cordless. Nope, it is not cordless. The corded telephone. Now that I am using the telephone, it definitely behaves differently than the standard AT&T 100 non-EB telephone. The numerics, when you press the, the number key, is it only sounds the tone for maybe a quarter of a second, regardless of how long you hold it. And the tone does not start sounding instantaneously with the press. There's a very slight delay which to me is actually kind of annoying to dial. It, it cosmetically has no difference from the AT&T 100 other than the fact that it has the little EB letters on the bottom right of the dialing area. I, I don't see any additional features. I don't see what the difference is between this one and the regular 100 other than the fact that there's definitely something different about the OEM of the telephone. In addition to the way the buttons function, which is different than the regular 100 I have, it does not have that typical AT&T telephone sound to it. Both the tones and the incoming audio of almost every AT&T branded telephone from the 90s, corded telephones anyways, and maybe early 2000s as well, I think mostly in the 90s, they have a very distinct sound to the audio and this does not have that so i don't know who the oem was you know there's lucent there's all these different brands that that were, were being used over the over the 90s and the 2000s to make these at&t telephones and i'm not that well versed in the history of which ones made which telephones during which year message two what I was trying to explain before the testing engine machine rudely ran out of message space is that I don't know what the OEM for this particular telephone is. I'm also not sure when this was made. A lot of the ones made through the 90s had a date code on the bottom, but this one I just don't see any kind of date code on the bottom. Well, actually there are some numbers um, on the bottom it says it says AT&T Technologies Incorporated, custom manufactured in China for AT&T, 2500 DMGK. D is in dog, M is in mmm, that's delicious. G is in goose, K is in, are you kidding me? Telephone set, and then below that it says 89215BS, which might be a date code, but it's some kind of BS code that's all encrypted, and I don't know how to decrypt it. So, who knows? It is heavier than the AT&T 100, so maybe it's older. I don't know. Well, that's it for this thing, uh, this testing message. I'm gonna test the mute button now. I'm gonna keep stalking, and I'm gonna press it. Goose, 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 It sounds like it's working in the handset, but I won't know until we play it back on the machine whether or not it actually worked. Over. End of messages. It sounds like the telephone is working properly, has good audio incoming and outgoing. The ringer is working, but it's got some reverberations to it, so we'll have to open it up and just figure out why it's like that. Otherwise, it's a great telephone. I just don't understand what's different about it between the regular 100 
such that it requires a whole different model number.